Okay, it is 12.30 on the dot, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, I am Karen O'Donohue from the Edu team, um, and we do t tutorials of currently on Sundays and at other teams at other times during the week. Um, first of all, we, there will be a survey at the end of this. We are really seriously interested in your feedback, so please take the survey. Uh, we're interested also in additional uh, topics and volunteers for those topics. Uh, and we're also interested in additional people that would like to help with the edu team. So um, if you are at all interested in this space, there's a lot of opportunity. A lot of things that people suggest that we should do that we just don't have the resources to do. So I would, I would uh, love your help. And the edu team mailing list is now an open mailing list, so you can actually just join it and start participating. Uh, and with that, um, the tutorial for this session, uh, we have one on how to create an internet draft using XML or a markdown. And we have Matt Miller to talk about the XML to RFC stuff. And we have Dan York to talk about uh, the markdown. So uh, thank you and have a good tutorial. Thank you, Karen. Um, can you, I'm hoping everybody can hear me all right. Is the audio working? Yeah. All right. So, hello everybody. Uh, as Karen said, I'm Matthew Miller, and I'm here to talk about um, how to create a uh, internet draft using um, XML to RFC. Um, so this tutorial overall, we're gonna go through, we're gonna briefly highlight some of the, some of the various options that are available, um, but I'll be talking about XML to RFC, and Dan will be then be talking about um, creating it with Markdown. Um, and then, even though we'll have a dedicated area for questions at the end, feel free to, um, if you have something particular, feel free to, to let us know and we'll, we'll try to explain. So, um, <clears throat> so the internet, um, the internet, the, the overall process for um, get, uh, publishing your document here is um, you, have your, you have your draft, whether it's working group or internet draft, and submit to the ISG, go through the community process and get to the, art, to the editor. That's, that's how you get things done, but obviously to get started you need to know what it is that you're creating. And some of your options for, for how to do that here are, um, there's obviously XML to RFC that we'll be talking about today, there's, and cram down, uh, which Dan will be talking about, but there's also MMARC. Um, there's also a few other options, whether it's with pan, uh, Pandoc, uh, likes uh, NROF, or even a Word template. And I believe, I think I saw recently somebody has an Emacs mode to help out. Um, but today we're talking about XML to RFC. What is it? <clears throat> well, it's a tool that will generate your internet drafts, that is, those NRFCs, from an XML source file. Um, and there's a couple of vocabularies. Um, some of you, if you've written them before, um, if we can get a sense, who, who's written an XML draft before? So, wow, many of us. All right, so the formal, um, most of you are probably familiar with the version two. Um, but there's now upcoming a uh, version three. Um, that's RFC 7991 plus some um, updates that Henrik has been working on. Um, so this will take that XML file and be able to convert it to text or to an HTML PDF, even a fully expanded. Um, and you can, um, you can either use it today through the website um, or download it yourself through um, Python. Um, some good reasons to use this is it does create it in the right, right format with the right boilerplate. Um, helps you get the formatting for your entries and be able to include them in your, in your cross-references. Plus you can get some outputs that are a little bit easier for, for, uh, for us to read in um, whether it's HTML or PDF. Um, and it also has some better support. This latest, the V3, has support for um, non-ASCII characters and, and um, SVG diagrams. So you can do all this with, um, obviously you can then pass this around, um, this file around for comments. Um, you've got all your metadata in there so you can, you can extract it back out or find these things. Um, and the RC editor, it, it simplifies their life. So now the XML to RFC tool is what you will use once you've written up your, your text in whatever editor you like to be able to do that conversion. Um, the V3 is up at, um, at this URL for uh, the experimental version, or you can download it. Um, again, it's, if you're familiar with Python, you can pip install um, XML to RFC. <coughs> and running it with this dash, 
dash v3 option then does all this v3 stuff we're about to talk about. There's a place you can um, file bugs or whether it's the um, data tra um, the track tools or an email, um, or you can reach out to Henrik here if you've got any particular questions. So the quick start side is you can use the tool online. There's, um, there's a couple options we'll be talking about in a bit that help you get started. Um, so you can use the tool online to get, to get a source, source document. There's a number of citation libraries that will then help you because, I mean, I don't think any of us have written something. I'm, ho I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure nobody here has written it completely from scratch with no references. Um, <clears throat> And then you can use your favorite tool to do the editing and use the XML to RFC in order to, to generate those outputs you can submit to the RFC, to the um, data tracker. Um, yes? The, what are the citation libraries? Um, so we're, we'll go into that in, in, a, in a while, um, but there, it, it's basically a very, it's, it's all the references you would normally put in, a, in an RFC for your other documents. It's a nice collection and easy way to use those. So. <sighs> right, so, um, so there's the command line to be able to generate a V3 from an existing V2, um, or you can use the web service, uh, and that will give you the, the source XML you can use then with your editor of choice. Um, so editing an existing one, um, there are a couple of options to get started. Um, if you have an existing internet draft text format, you can use the, um, the ID to XML to do this conversion. Um, or there's, web, there's a web service to do this, and that will take that format and, and um, give you an XML file you can start, um, start working from. Um, it's better if you've got a, an existing XML file. Um, the, the ID tool does the best it can, but every once in a while there's some hiccups, so you'll have to go back and maybe clean some things up, make sure some references get correct. Um, there's, uh, so there's the XML file. If you've got an XML file, you can do that conversion. Um, if you've got a markdown, you can, use, you can run uh, cram down and, and update, um, and then you can do whatever updates you need to do. Fred. Yes. Do we have a V3 DTD? Do we have a V3? Henrik, do you, is there a, I, I don't recall. There is one in the, um, is, there an exi uh, is there an explicit so DTD? Henrik, Henrik, we've got, we've got remotes. Yeah, <coughs> so the, the um, schema for V3 cannot be expressed as a DTD. It exists as a relaxed schema, uh, as RNC or RNG files. Uh, and it's embedded in the distribution of XML to RFC. I can send either or both of those two separately. Uh, if it's a fairly up-to-date editor, it should be able to take in the schema in that form. Well, um, so the easiest way for me to generate a V3 file is to create it in V2 and convert it, is what you're saying. Uh, and oh, by the way, if I wanted a graphic, uh, I'll create it as a PNG and then convert that to SVG. <laughs> So if you're, I assume that the follow-up question is because you're not certain that your editor can handle a RelaxNG schema. Is that right? Okay. Um, I'm looking for a way that I can use the tooling that I've got, not switch to a different editor, and oh, by the way, buy a $400 software package that I can create up and so on and so on. Okay, so if you if your editor cannot take in the V3 schema, then going the way you mentioned, converting a V2 should work. Um, for the for the illustrations, I haven't tested using PNGs, so I'm not going to say that it will work. Uh, but you'll, 
I would recommend that you find a way. And I've looked myself for tools to create SVGs, free tools, and there are a number of them. So you shouldn't have to buy anything new. But if you want to, to work with SVGs, you will have to get some tool to, to do so. You can't expect it to come out of nothing. Right. So um, there is a there is a slide on this, but um, generally, as long as you've kept them pretty simple and keep them black and white, then the conversion should work. Um, so gradients are going to be a problem if there's really advanced, um, like essentially embedded images. That'll be a problem. But if they're if they are paths. Um, boxes, they, they should gen it should generally convert correctly. Right. Right. Um, yes? Just, just a clarification question. So, if I want to use SVG, I'm building my SVG picture, and then there is a tool that will maybe use uh, all the fonts or um, do, do some processing of the picture, the original picture, before inserting it to the track. Um, yeah, so the XML RFC will take some steps to, to, to render it correctly as, as an ASCII. Um, at least that's what I think I saw. And um, so that you, it'll be in the, in the, in the internet draft. Um, and the HTML will come out with, with a rendered image. I don't recall, I, I admit I don't recall what, looking at it to see whether it was a PNG that it spat out or an SVG. Um, most all modern browsers can handle SVG natively. Um, okay, the HTML will have my original SVG. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So some other options for creating this this XML file is again we'll have um, Dan go over cram down or there's M mark. So if you're willing to start from from Markdown, um, and there is a um, a creation wizard. wizard. Um, does spit out the, the V2 format, so you'll need to go through through the, the V2 to V3 conversion um, mentioned earlier to, to work with that. But So there are some tools to help you get started. Um, so creating this internet draft, obviously, so as we said, we start with an existing file. You make your, your author element for yourself. Um, within, your, within your text, you'll, you'll wrap your paragraphs around a T or text element. Um, any, any artwork you would put in there, you would wrap with, uh, with an artwork element, source code with a source code element, and citations with an XREF. Um, and we'll go over um, here soon what those, some, some details on those citation references. Um, so one of the new things with the V3 format is support for um, non-ASCII, for Unicode. Um, so here's an, here's an example of, of rendering uh, Chen Wu. Um, with both his ASCII information and his in Chinese uh, information. Um, and so you could do this, um, you can put these characters with this XML format, um, and as long as you haven't done any, as long as you use the UTF-8 encoding um, for the XML document, um, you can put in, in the normal places you would have put your author name, organization information, your email address, postal address, um, and even reference titles and series information, you can put in that, that Unicode information. You can put in the Unicode characters, and all of those elements have a um, have a have an ASCII um, attribute to put in the ASCII text for um, for rendering out for those that um, need the ASCII representation. Um, the ASCII representation helps with searching. Um, not not all of our tools are the greatest on on searching across all of Unicode um, correctly, so. That helps with that. Helps with rendering in some places where you, you, um, UTF-8 may not be universally available yet. Um, the only other place is whenever you're putting um, the new the new system does allow you to put Unicode um, just about anywhere. The one requirement is using the the U element that helps validate and be able to put in some additional information, um, such as you can put in your Unicode string and be able to tell it, I'd want to spit out, I want to output. Output output the the Unicode representation plus 
the um, Unicode code points that would be relevant for that. So for anybody that that code point may, for whatever reason, not render, at least they still have the representation, um, a, des a description of the representation. So um, you, the U element is, is uh, brand new with V3 updates. <laughs> So it's not in RFC 7991 itself, but it is in the updates that Henrik has been working on. Um, and that, um, so there's some details we can, we can point you towards. Um, so here's an updated author template. As you can see, there's the normal, value, the normal things we've been used to. Um, now surname, well, plus surname and uh, full name, all our ASCII, uh, but with these new ASCII, ASCII attributes, we're able to put in the, the ASCII versions of whatever Unicode values you have put in. Um, so as we said, there's uh, support for SVG diagrams. Here's one generated um, <coughs> uh, probably from like something like plant UML that can spit out SVGs. Um, and like I said, um, so you can use them. They need to be black and white images and a subset of this SVG tiny profile. Um, they will be included in your HTML and PDF. Um, and as I said, just all, all current browsers know how to render these. Um, render these. Um, there's a couple ways. There's the, the X include to actually put it into your internet draft source. Um, and an ASCII art um, equivalent, you can add that, but, and one will be generated if, if it's not there, but you can include it if you think you can get that formatted better. Um, RC7996 has more tips on, on making use of um, SVGs within your, within your drafts. So also with the new, with that comes up is new text stylings. Um, if you are familiar with um, semantic HTML, these should be pretty, pretty familiar. EM for italics, strong for bold, TT for your fixed width, and sub and sub for super and uh, subscript and superscripts. And here's an example of some renderings. Also new here is um, differentiated list types. So before you might have been used to putting in uh, list and T elements in order to render out and having to do some fiddling with attributes. Now there's differentiation between ordered lists, unordered lists, and definition lists. So the, 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 un the ordered list, this is your normal with numbers or with letters. Um, there's also some, some additional customization you can do via that type out. Uh, attribute on the OL. Um, UL for um, unordered lists. So this is your normal bulleted lists. If you put empty equals true, then um, instead of getting a bullet, you will, you will get an indented line with that text. Um, and then the definition lists. Um, so often in your terms, if you got expanded definition terms, this is a good way to render. Here's the name of the term, and here's, here's the description for it. Um, and these elements, similar to as you would find in, XM, in HTML, render out. Um, some of the other new elements we have are a source code. So instead of using artwork, um, there is now a source code element that has a number of types that it, it supports um, natively. Uh, and if on request, I'm sure um, Henrik can, can point us to any, any additions there may be if others come up. Um, so block quote, this is good for uh, indenting quotes from if you're quoting certain lines from other documents or other, other things, good way to put them in. And an aside, um, again, incidental text like a warning, a call out, a note, um, gives you some more flexibility on putting these, these things together in your document. Um, so now, um, references. So this is where the citation libraries come in. And listed here are a number of the existing citation libraries. If you ever go looking at any one of these, um, you will find them, it, it's essentially a directory of, of XML files, and each of those XML files essentially includes that um, reference element you would have put in by hand. Um, so these are very handy, um, the, especially the RC Internet Drafts. Actually, I believe all of these are, are essentially rendered for you as these drafts are updated. So there's not really a need to go back and keep continuously updating your your references manually in your draft as long as you're using the citation libraries. Um, so here's some examples of making use of these references. So this is where the xref element comes in. Um, and you can put a target. Um, as you can see, the targets are, are pretty much what you would have used um, 
They, they match what you will find in the citation libraries. Um, so RFCs, RFC and the number. Internet drafts start with I-D and the name minus the draft and minus the version number at the end. And then IEEE's format, um, ZEPs also have a similar thing if you're doing anything with XMPP. Um, with those reference tags, you can um, do some customization. So if you prefer to have uh, numbered references instead of the named references, um, you can do that with the, um, with the ref element and specify simrefs equals no instead of its default. Um, if you'd rather have names instead of these, if you'd rather have more f familiar names rather than RFC numbers or unit draft names, um, there's a way to put in a display reference element that then you can essentially create an alias from your existing um, included references and say this, now, this, this is now to this target instead of um, um, what was in the um, citation. So, um, also here is, and there's now support for uh, tables. If you are familiar with um, semantic HTML, the table format here is, is very similar. Um, and it's a way for you to put a table in without having to resort to trying to get the, trying to get the, um, the ASCII artwork lined up just right. Um, this also gives you better support in HTML and PDF outputs. Um, and here's an example of, of an HTML output. So some, some do's and don'ts around this. So um, rather than hard coding your references, and, and the XREF can be used for references even to your own sections. So you can, instead of using, instead of saying in section such and such of this, of my, of our, of this document, you can put an XREF to there. Yeah, you should also be using XREFs when pointing to other documents. Um, again, um, with, the X, with the XML RFC tool, this will, the output will do all the right things, if, especially if you've ever need to reorganize your document, change, its, change the outline, um, possibly have to update some references. Um, this will take care of those details for you. Um, the, uh, the other thing is instead of using artwork, um, we shouldn't be, with V3, uh, instead of using artwork for your lists or your tables, um, artwork should just be used for the actual diagrams you're trying to put into your document. Uh, instead, you should be using the, the ordered list, unordered list, or definition lists, or the tables, uh, table format instead. Right. Then. Now, with all of this, especially for source code and uh, sometimes with, even with artwork, um, there's a need to do, you know, if you're, this is an XML format, sometimes you need to be able to drop XML in or you need to drop characters that are special to XML. Um, C data, this is, um, if you've already been doing XML v2, you've probably run into, run into this. Um, C data is, is essentially an escape mechanism for XML. Um, it will then let you put in anything um, between that um, angle bracket C data and a, a, the closing square bracket, square bracket, uh, angle bracket. Um, you can put anything in there other than that square bracket, square bracket, angle bracket. Um, and that will be rendered as it is typed. So you will, instead of seeing, instead of you getting some sort of weird error with an XREF, like in this example, you would see angle bracket XREF close angle. So now that you've got some idea of what, how to put these together, you can start putting your files to work. Um, share them around for comments co with your, with your co-authors or editors. Or, um, so especially if you use a, um, some other uh, code reviewing tool or document reviewing tool, it can be handy to be able to point back to lines. Um, you can upload your um, XML to the um, ID submission tool, um, and it will, if you submit just the XML, for the mo it should output the correct formats for, um, X for the, the text, the HTML, the PDF. Um, once your draft is approved for publication, the RFC editor would really like your um, XML format, it helps them get started very quickly. And if you've been submitting it through the data tracker, they've already got it. Um, and like I said, you can use these to render your, um, your init draft to HTML, so it's um, maybe possibly more accessible to some people. Um, there's a lot more functionality than we can <laughs> cover in this uh, tutorial, so you can always go out and try it. As I said, XML to RFC you can do with uh, pip install. Um, Read more in 7991 and um, 
Lovowitz's document, Henrik's um, updates here. And then for SVGs, there's 76, 7996. Um, there's frequently asked questions. If something's not there, you can reach out to Henrik and he'll do his best to answer. Um, and there's a, a quick intro um, that goes over this plus some, some more details. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions uh, for this part, um, you can ask now. Uh, there's also the mailing list um, and the RFC editor, or you can either reach out on that email address or visit them at their desk this week. And uh, as Karen said, there is a survey we'd really like you to be able to take. Go ahead, John. Uh, hi. Uh, I've, I, 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 I've been writing RFCs at least as long as Fred has, so I can't claim complete ignorance of this process. Um, however, it, it seems to me from what you said that as we transition to version 3, if I'm someone who's got good editing tools which are DTT dependent, that if I create version two and then convert to version three, as you suggested, that I don't get any of the version three features, including the ability, since I spend a lot of my time these days on internationalization, the ability to use non ASCII characters, which the version two DTD rejects. Um, so from what you said, I think I'm more or less out of luck unless I learn and install and use a completely new set of tools. Is that correct? Um, if you need, if you absolutely need use of the V3, then I, unfortunately that, that is the case right now. Um, although Henrik, he's <laughs> going back and forth. Henrik's going to the mic. <laughs> Henrik Levkovitz. So uh, I've been thinking, um, I don't know how hard it will be to produce a DTD for tools that can't read the newer RelaxNG schema. Um, but it should be possible to add most of the new elements in DTD form. Uh, I, as I said, I don't know how much work it will be to, to try to, to uh, convert a schema to something close that can be expressed is, as a DTD, but I will actually make a try at that, which should help both uh, Fred and, and John uh, keep current tools. Yeah, it, 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 it would be a big help. It's, all, it's, it's also a big help for another reason, which is that uh, insofar as the RFC editor is planning on making the XML form, whatever that means, the archival form, the continuing evolution of these new forms is uh, is potentially quite problematic. And uh, uh, and things which can be expressed as DTDs are in that sense probably more archivally stable. I'm Henrik again. Uh, I'm not an expert on, on schema Ex schema languages. Uh, my understanding is that DTD is not used as much as Relax NG these days, but anyway, I will make a try. One more thing. Um, for the V3 features, you will need V3 language, but if you only want the V3 output, you're, you're perfectly fine continuing in V2. So you don't, don't feel forced into V3 until you actually want to use the V3 features. Uh, un un understood. Uh, one additional question. Um, when talking about non-ASCII characters, the comment was made about handling UTF-8. Uh, the difficulty is that properly rendering um, non-ASCII characters, especially for complex scripts, requires a lot more than simply handling UTF-8. It requires script-specific and sometimes language-specific 
rendering tools. Uh, has that been dealt with or are we still pretending that if we can simply put UTF-8 up on the screen, that's sufficient? Henrik again. Um, what XML if, 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 if the question makes no sense, let's have an offline conversation. There's no time, no uh, need to right. uh, take up tutorial time. But shortly, um, what XML to RFC does today is to process everything as Unicode. So any, any conversion to UTF-8 happens when the result is output. And uh, I probably can look at whether additional things are needed there, but I need more information if there is if there are problems, I need to, to have them pointed out. Yeah, your, 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 your question implies that we should have an offline conversation. Thank you. Really quickly, this is Joe from CDT. Be sure to check your tools, guys, uh, and, and everybody. Um, RelaxNG should be widely supported unless you wrote it yourself. Um, so it may just be pointing to a different schema and playing around like that, um, at least for the, for the document definition. Now uh, I will hand you to Dan. Thanks, Matt. So I'm going to talk now about uh, using Markdown to create drafts. Let me ask a first question. How many people have used Markdown to create a draft? Okay, number, how many people use Markdown for other stuff? All right, other people. Okay. So uh, basically the question is sort of why are we talking about Markdown? And the answer is because if you look at the text on the screen, that text there is uh, probably easier for most people, except for those in this room, okay, to be able to understand, all right? So it's, that's what Markdown is. It's a lightweight formatting language. It's been around for a bit since uh, John Gruber and Aaron Schwartz and co. created it um, first there. The goal is that it is a writing format. It's just a text file. You're just going in and writing stuff. You've seen it used. Many of you will have seen agendas for working groups that are written in Markdown here, et cetera. Um, it looks something like this, you know, using the number sign, hashtag, octothorpe, whatever we want to call it for headings, the text, you know, dashes or bullets, all of that. It's a very simple format like that. You could see how you could do a link. You put square brackets around the target text. You put parentheses around the, the URL. It's all, I mean, this is how Markdown is. You just write this in a text file using any kind of editor, anything like that, and then you work with it. Um, in RFC 7764, which is about using Markdown and design guidelines, has this nice chart which sort of shows where Markdown fits in the, in the formatting of things. There are many different flavors. Uh, there's long discussions around John, why John Gruber did not want Markdown standardized in different ways, and as a result, there's a lot of different flavors out there in different forms. Um, we're going to talk specifically about one of them. You should know there is actually now an IANA registry for Markdown variants, which has a number of different uh, uh, registrations inside of there. Um, RFC 7764 talks about guidance on Markdown, and it provides a good, a good reading, a good background about what it is, what the tools are, what the pieces are in there. To talk about creating an internet draft, you actually, it's a two-step process. You write your draft in Markdown, and then you run it through some tool that generates XML, and then it actually goes through the XML to RFC tool that Matt was just up here talking about. So you're just basically doing the first part to go and create the draft or to create the XML file. You're using this as a way to get that XML file to use. Now you don't actually have to edit that XML file. You can do everything in Markdown if your draft is you know, relatively straightforward and not doing super complex things. But you do also, there are people I know who use Markdown as a way to generate the XML files, which they then go and edit further using an XML editor of some form. There are a couple of different Markdown tools that are out there. Two of the ones that I know a number of people using are, the one I'm gonna talk about today, Cramdown RFC, which is developed by uh, Karsten Borman, who you'll see around here and another one um, called MMARC. And actually, I just will say, I just discovered before putting this up here that URL is slightly wrong. He has a different repo now for where he's doing his updated code, but it's, MMARC is out there as well. There are two different ways they differ slightly in the, in the way they provide the header info and other stuff like that, but they're both out there. So Cramdown is, uh, is a very simple tool to use. If you've got 
um, Ruby on your system or something, or you know, most operating systems these days often have it installed in some form, you can just type gem install cram down RFC 2629. You might have to have root access or, or use sudo or something like that to go and install it. But once you do that, then the process is really simple. You create a markdown file, it just with whatever text editor you want to use, and you have it you know, end with .md or .mkd, and then you run this, this one simple command, kdrfc, cram down rfc, kdrfc, and the, and the markdown file name, and, and that's it. It generates an XML file for you, and it generates your text file for you. It, it has all of the you know, appropriate formatting. You can submit directly from those files. You can submit them directly into the data tracker. Uh, and, this is, and that's my tool chain when I'm creating stuff now is I just go and I write the file in Markdown. I do KDRFC, and then I just upload those files. You, uh, you can find more at this URL that's shown for, uh, for uh, Karsten's repo on GitHub. Uh, he did let me know that if for some reason your system does not have UTF-8 support in it, it should these days, but if you're somehow using an older system or something, you may have unpredictable things if you put UTF-8 into your Markdown file. You just wanted me to, let, to warn people about that. You also can, if you want to just experiment with this, or if your system doesn't support Ruby or something like that, you can also just go and use the, the, the cram down converter that's on the tools experimental page. Basically, what you would just do is create your markdown file. You can go to this experimental page. You can upload the file. And then it will spit out the XML file, which then you would have to run through XML to RFC. So a little bit easier, in my opinion, to use it locally. But it is also possible to use the online tool that's out there. So to work with it, it's based on uh, something, a variant of Markdown called Cramdown, which was developed by uh, Thomas Leitner. If you want to see all of the syntax, you can go to that URL and it will show you, you know, all of the various different things you can do inside of the file. You begin your file with these three dashes, um, and then the header uses YAML. So you would just go and put something like this at the beginning, your title, abbreviation, all those kinds of things. If you want to incorporate references, you know, like as, as Matt was talking about earlier, the syntax is, is really simple. You just go inside the file and you say for a normative reference, you would just put the curly brace, curly brace, exclamation point, and then whatever it is you want to have for the normative reference, and then two closed curly braces to do it. Um, or to make an informative reference, you would put a question mark instead of that. If you're referencing drafts, you do the same thing. You remove the word draft from the name and you put I, capital I dash capital D dot whatever at the beginning, but you can just put those in there, and then the cram down, the KDRC tool will automatically pull the references and put it into its local cache and just build all that for you. So you don't have to get into doing X includes or any other different pieces like that. You just put, the, put it in quite like that. Um, it, there's a lot of references out there. There's a lot of pieces that you can go and find, um, examples that are around there. Um, I have a tutorial uh, repo that has some examples there. Martin Thompson also has a lengthy uh, Git repo that has all sorts of tools for getting started. And he has a variety of different kinds of drafts and, and features that are there. And he works with both the cram, uh, the cram down and the MMARC formats. So uh, that was really all I was going to show was talk about it's, it's really that easy. And I could talk a little bit more. I can show a couple examples if people want. But Markdown's a new tool. There's a number of new different tool chains that are being created that let us go and create these drafts very simply. Um, you can embed some XML, some HTML inside of the files if you want to do something more, exa exam uh, more advanced. And uh, I think that's really it to tell you that uh, there's two RFCs you can look at. One is about the repository. One's about the design guidelines. Uh, Karsten's got this, this repo up there with his tool. Um, I have a repo which has this slide set and some of the other examples and uh, examples that are out there. There is also a mailing list, RFC Markdown, which a number of us are on, and people are very you know, receptive to talking to you about different tools and things that are there. And, and there's a survey, and that's it. So questions? All right. Hi, uh, Arnaud Tadei. So, um, I wish I had this presentation uh, a month ago before I did my first ID on Markdown. Uh, my experience is that it, it's pretty easy, I must say. Uh, you have to make your experiments, but 
is one thing that made me suffer a lot was to enter all the references. Because if you miss a single space uh, in the reference when you have to indent everything, if you have one character wrong, the uh, Cramdan RFC does not really tell you where exactly it is. Right? I could not find a way exactly where, I, where, where to find it. So I had 50 plus references. I can tell you it was very, very long to find exactly where it was. So uh, anyway, so apart from that, uh, uh, yeah, I wish I had this presentation before because I learned a few things. So thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Well, Karsten's here actually. If you want to, um, not not in the room. I don't think. No. No. Nope. But he's uh, he's been in the hackathon. Um, if you want to point out that to him, he's very receptive to comments and feedback like this. Okay. Thank you. I would also say too, one of the nice things with Markdown um, that I found is that it makes it really it works really well when you're using a, a Git repository to to collaborate with other people because the insertions and the, the diffs, the ability to go and work with that is a whole lot easier than when you're working with XML and you wind up having to reflow stuff and things get in different pages and stuff on that line. So there's a comment there. Dimitri. Oh yeah, hi, uh, thanks. Uh, just a quick question. You mentioned the alternative tool and well, you said this is a preferred. Can you say why? Uh, it's not preferred. It was a case of I just have a few minutes to talk here and so I was um, just using KDR, KDRFC is a little bit easier in terms of just how you go and reference it. It's got this KDRFC command, it's very simple. Uh, MMark, you have to put a few more command line options on, but I, many of my earlier drafts were written using MMark. It, the differences are not that much, it's really just pick one. Cool, and one more thing, I looked at IANA, well, it's not a protocol registry, mentioned there is an IANA markdown registry, and what's the difference between all these things, like, you know, because I know I, I do write markdown sometimes. I know there is like a basic, and there is people try to make it better, right? So, yep. so yeah, embrace extends. So, is that really important? So, uh, let me back up a question. One thing would be to if you, as far as the tools go, Cramdown is written in Ruby, available there, and uh, um, MMark is written in Go. So, there's partly a you know language choice if you want to look at it or if you want to do anything with that or run it in different mm -hmm. forms. Th they also the two diverge slightly in some of the syntax, like the references. Um, Meek's code uses I think square brackets instead of angle braces, and so there's a couple little differences inside of there. But it's really a question of which one you want to use um, that are there. Uh, for those who want to install tools without um, without doing all the install in your own system. Paul Jones has created a, a, a Docker image of um, Meek's set of tools, so that was another way to run that one easier. It's just, you know, you can experiment with either one. As far as the registry, I, I'm, I was not directly involved with the creation of that or anything around that. My understanding was it was created primarily for other people and tools to be able to have some understanding of what the different variants are. So it's not so, to be, but it's good to know that if you use one tool chain and switch, your text file wouldn't work. <laughs> Correct, because it's, it's, it's marked down, right? There's no standard, it's not standardized. You have to pick which variant you're going to use. Yeah, Just like if you use GitHub flavored markdown for something. Yeah, and like you try even RFC markdown else. flavors differ in syntax. And Correct. That's awesome, Correct. right? The basics, <laughs> they all support, you know, John Gruber's original basics, yeah. but then they go on from there to do other different pieces. Yeah, cool, things. Oh, Sebastian. Take no, we'll go. Oh, okay. So we go on then to just a comment, I, I think, well, we, we had a comment, uh, someone saying that you have to reference all the, you have to put all the reference in the header, but I, I don't think that's necessary, so you just put the brackets and... Right, it's, no, in, in Markdown, you don't have to go and put all the references in there. Um, you can just put literally, like in here, in this example that I've shown here, uh, I'm not showing a reference on there, if you scroll down, yeah, just go down, like there, and the in this line to do introduction, more information can be found in blah. You can literally just reference the, the draft or the RFC right in the text. You do not have to have your list of references first. What? Okay, Mike Bishop was saying he believes it's a more recent edition. Update your tools. Right. So <clears throat> I have a question as well. Uh, we also have. Okay. Go ahead. Um, oh. Sebastian, we, we just let you come into the queue, but then you disappeared. So if you want to come back, oh, maybe that's you. That's him. All right, we'll get Sebastian here. You're on. And it 
dropped again? I think he's having some issues. Okay, well, so go ahead. Right, so I saw in the previous presentation that so there is a story moving from a version 2 to a version 3, so I saw a lot of new vocabulary added or changed. When we are in cram down, uh, I guess all of this is taken care of, right, already, or when you S produce from cram down to XML? So, uh, go ahead, Henrik, come on up. <laughs> no, you're... <laughs> expert, expert. Yeah. As far as I know, uh, nobody has adapted any of the, the uh, markdown tools to work with, uh, with version 3 yet. I'm sure that, that they will, okay. uh, but no. Um, <sighs> let's see, there's someone who has done work, some experimentation with, with V3, and he I also has a tool, so I'll, I'm going to send a, a query, but uh, currently I don't know of a tool that does v V3 okay. from so have down. You have to ask two things to Karsten. One, yes. fix the, <laughs> the space, and two, uh, understand V3. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, my, my understanding was I think they're looking at, you know, but I don't know if they definitely had that support yet. Other questions, comments? Yep, somebody coming over here. And Sebastian, if you want to get back in the queue, we'd be glad to have your question. This is Alice Russo, I'm part of the RFC Production Center. Thanks so much for these presentations. Um, the point I wanted to make goes back to the first one when there were questions about SVG and how do you know your SVG is going to be accepted. Um, there's been a tool created called SVG Check, which is for this purpose, um, which will compare it against the um, SVG set that's been defined in RFC 7996 BIS. <coughs> and SVG check is available right now from PyPy, so it's PyPy projects SVG check, but it will eventually be a web service, so you could upload your XML file and it would tell you um, if your SVG is okay for the subset of tiny SVG that's accepted, um, or an individual SVG file. And it also attempts to correct your SVG to make it um, match that profile. <laughs> <coughs> And the other thing I was going to say was uh, regarding the previous question, if anyone has updated their uh, Markdown tool to use the V3 vocabulary, um, I think M. Mark has started the work on that, and it's on his, um, his M. Mark page. Thanks. Other questions or comments? Anything else? Nope, oh, we'll give Sebastian another try. Hey, does this work? There we go. It does. Yes. Oh, okay. We, we even okay. see you. Yay. Oh, oh, oh that's, that's interesting. Um, I can see you guys too. So hey, great presentation. I'm, um, I'm starting to write RFCs, and I've been mess, uh, like playing around with these tools by Martin Thompson and the cram down. I was um, wondering if there's a good um, reference to all the options and keywords and values that, uh, like for, there's a lot of things like including snippets, and I'm not sure where to find those. Does that mention in there? So I, I guess there's there's two things. One, in the syntax of, um, let me see where, where it is. So if you look at um, Karsten's, uh, Karsten's repo has some information in there and may have, I don't know if he's got the exact, list of features inside of there. The other piece is um, in Martin's thing, I put, a, I put a, a URL down there for some of the features that are in there. That may be where he's got more of it. There's a couple of other different drafts um, that, uh, that you can take a look at. And also, quite honestly, if you look at much of, I think pretty much all of the drafts written in the Quick Working Group these days are all mm -hmm. in Markdown. Um, so in Quick, if you look at those, like pretty much all of that. And I also believe the HTTP BIS um, working group is mostly all marked down as well. So if you look mm -hmm. at those, you could see examples from their actual code uh, of how they've gone and done that. That's also a great mm -hmm. example of maybe uh, another thing we could do with adding on some more to some more uh, markdown tutorial docs. Thank you. All right. Anything else, Sebastian? No, thank you very much. I'll, I'll take a look at that, I guess. Uh, I've been looking at all these examples, especially from the Doe group, 
Um, yeah, Doe too, yeah, that'd be another one. Is there any uh, difference between the, um, uh, sorry, I'm not sure what to call it, but like you, you can submit for the standards track under an area, or you can submit an independent stream, I think. Um, is there any difference in the mark count for that? Uh, I'm seeing a lot of uh, the examples from like the Quick and HTTP and, and Do, uh, and they're all submitted under working groups. Is there a difference in the mark count format that I would look like not get from those examples? No, I, I think the, the format would be the same. It would just be in the header what you put for you know, the working group or the stream or, or whatever the piece would be. And if you want to do it, if you're looking at it for independent um, stream or something, uh, fire one of us an email and we can help you find that if you, if you need to. Or put it on the RFC markdown list. Right, I'll, I'll contact the list then. Thank you. Thank you. All right, sure. Anything else? Yes, question here. I'm Rahul Jadav. So uh, in general, I've been using Markdown for all the other purposes, not for the ID editing. The problem that I faced uh, in general was adding comments to the document. And there is no easy way of doing it. You have to use HTMLized XML format to add comments in the Markdown itself. So I'm wondering, uh, th there are two questions that I have. So in, in general, in XML, we use the comment style, which, right, is, right. which is, which is, but the same comment style has to be applied in Markdown as well in the, uh, for the ID edition. That, that so, so Markdown ultimately will take, I mean, it's a simplified format, but ultimately will take your XML or HTML and, and plop it in where, where it can. So you can, um, I haven't tried this recently, but I, I believe I've, I've myself have a Markdown draft that I've put in comments using the XML comment brackets. So can, uh, can, can that be simplified? I mean, is it possible that, that uh, it, it, it looks pre pretty weird? And the other question that I have is... <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Um, go ahead. The other question that I have is, will those comments be, I mean, the cram down tool, I'm not, I've not used that, uh, sorry to say, but uh, will that tool incorporate, the, uh, incorporate those comments in the XML as well, or will it uh, just discard those comments well? So I, I, I don't know. I think that's a third question yeah. for Karsten. I, right. I, he was going to come, actually, but he's right. probably over at the hackathon working okay. on something right. there. I'll, so I'll check with I, him, yeah. I, I, believe, I believe at one point it, uh, it did. I don't know if it still does. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Anything else? All right, well then Matt and I will be around for a few more minutes and please do take the short survey. And again, please join either the, the RFC Markdown list or the XML list if you're interested in being involved with more of these tools. And like we said, Karsten Borman is uh, the author of Cramdown. He's here. I, I don't know whether Meek's here, but I've seen Karsten around anyway. And uh, he'd be glad to talk to you about tools. All right, thank you very much. Yep. Oh. And I'll, Mike Bishop, I'll point out that I'm doing a tutorial specifically on the ID template in the next time slot, and it's downstairs. Yes. Yes, GitHub if you, tools. If you'd like to go there and see how the ID template works with GitHub and other pieces, please go follow Mike and see it on there. Thank you all. <laughs>